Well, I was going to say good morning, but it's good afternoon. Welcome to the Farmer Rich Friday podcast. My name is Lindsay Holland. I am your host, and I'm excited to bring on one of our team members today, Jill Powell. Jill is also uh, an appraiser, and there is some interesting things going on right now, as all of y'all know protesting your property taxes. It's like doomsday. Everybody's getting ready for tax season. And then, you know, go to get this lovely note in the mail that says your property's worth a thousand times more than, you know, you paid for it and you're getting taxed on that. So um, just going to throw that out there just, just so you're not scared, Jill. I know that this is a tricky situation. I know that because it, you know, involves the government and um, local politics and things of that nature, uh, it can kind of get a little heated. And uh, I want us to be as forward and truthful as possible because it's the one thing we pride ourselves in here um, on our podcast is, you know, we're just going to shoot you straight. And also uh, we want to get you the facts. And if you need to fight for your rights, definitely do so. So um, welcome. And Jill, would you mind just kicking us off and getting us started with kind of how you ended up in this position, not only to be a, a, an appraiser, but also you're a licensed real estate professional. You're on our farm and ranch team. Um, you know, give us some insight on that. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of fell into the real estate uh, industry when my husband and I moved to Austin in 2003. Um, I met some friends here. They were busy appraising. They needed some help. And I'd always wanted to be self-employed and I was also interested in real estate. So I kind of started out in the industry as an appraiser um, and became certified. So that means I'm certified residential and I can do um, any kind of property that's considered residential, but not commercial. So that's kind of like where I've been for 13 years or so. Along the way, I met Elizabeth Riley, who talked to me about eXp Realty. And basically, I realized I know so much about the industry. Why wouldn't I just get my license and um, at least do my own deals? So I kind of carried my license for a couple years underhandedly. But over the last um, year, I've decided to make it more of my full time journey to be an agent versus an appraiser. And the main reason is because I feel like I can help people more directly this way. Um, using my knowledge that I've gained over the last 13 years, I can really help people make better decisions. And one of the big things that kind of hits people is these property taxes and the valuations that the county um, comes up with every year. And so as an appraiser and an agent, I like to help people understand the process better at this time of the year so that they have a better chance of, you know, getting a fair deal with the government and paying fair amount of taxes. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> I know, like it really, like we said, it's a kind of a touchy situation. Um, however, we're going to navigate this. Um, so we're going to use me, ironically, as a test dummy. Um, I live in Gillespie County, which let's face it, if you're familiar with Texas in general, this county is a unicorn. Um, prices are inflated. Mind you, it is the place to live and be and and do so um i want you to go ahead and get your screen up you and i already talked about um where i live and and some line items but guys we're just going to go into what's the process so first things first you probably get a letter in the mail or you know it's coming um so obviously you would reach out to someone like you um and say hey i need some help facilitating protesting um this property taxes so so let's walk us through that process where do we start yeah. So if you want to process, if you want to protest on your own um, versus using a service, which you can do either depending on your time and your commitment, how many properties you own and that sort of thing. Um, you know, when you get your notice in the mail, you've got to check it over and you need to make sure that they're taxing the right person, that they're taxing you in the right county, that they've got all of your exemptions that you're supposed to have in place. So that includes your agricultural exemption, your wildlife over 65, your homestead, you want to check all those basic facts. And then you also want to take a look at the value that they've assigned you for that year. And, you know, I don't expect the general public to really know what their home values are right now, especially over the last couple of years where we've had a lot of kind of fluctuation and uncertainty in the market. It's a really interesting time 
to try to know that. So yeah, I do recommend as one of your first steps before you go fill out your online form, you need to contact someone that you trust in the real estate industry. So either an appraiser or your realtor or your broker that you like to work with best. And of course, we're here to help you if you don't have anybody right now. So yeah. And as a broker, I would tell the audience out there, err on the side of caution of using a broker agent. Um, this is not what we, this is not our expertise. Uh, we actually cannot give you value. We, a, a while back, the only person that could give you a certified uh, appraisal and, and absolute certified value is a licensed appraiser in the state of Texas or whatever state you're in. So making sure it's, it's it may be easy to, to order a broker's price opinion or a CMA uh, to assist the appraiser. Uh, however, if you are going to do this, I recommend going to an appraiser because like yourself, you're going to have access to even more uh, comparables and solds than the standard agent or broker would. Is that correct? It's true. It's true. You can get a full appraisal and that's going to be your best, you know, your best argument probably at the same time. Um, you know, getting sales comparables and a broker's price opinion from just gaining the information from your real estate professional. And then you can kind of base based on that is also acceptable. So, so I think together all your evidence of process, basically, and if you can get multiple sources. Your agent and your broker and even your appraiser, you know, it depends on what level of service you 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 ask for, but basically, you know, you can get the information and make your own determination from just the information they've given you. It's not us actually giving you the value. It's us giving you the information that we might use to base your value on. And then you kind of have that responsibility yourself, or you can hire an appraiser and have an actual appraisal. So, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, obviously contact a, a, a certified a, appraiser, contact your broker, get that information. Where do I go to find out what the county has uh, deemed my property values to be? Okay. Let's start, let's start at the basics. Like I know nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically you can open up your Google and type in your county um, for appraisal district. And it's probably going to be, you know, Gillespie CAD or Hayes CAD, Travis CAD, they're all, um, they're all basically the same. Um, once you're on that website, you can move around from property searches to going to find the protest information for that particular county. And I do recommend going to your particular county because even though the process is similar in all counties, there are some small differences. So definitely stay local, local governments. You got to keep that in mind. Um, and just for those that are brand new to this and, and don't feel, don't feel um, stupid or inadequate. There are no stupid questions. Um, you know, this is the first time home buyer. And I know people that are very savvy in real estate. They have no idea how to do this. So, um, so the, the county CAD, which CAD sounds for County Appraisal District. Like you said, you can just Google that and you'll find the County Appraisal District site. And there'll be a search bar um, on that site. Most real estate agents definitely know how to use this because we get a lot of information. Uh, I like what you said. Go there first and make sure that all the info is correct. Because I have seen scenarios where the property wasn't in the right county. Um, it didn't have the right information, didn't have the right, you know, acreage or um, exemptions, things of that nature. So definitely do your due diligence. And if you need someone, you can reach out to us uh, or reach out to Jill and, you know, look that information over properly and one, make sure it's correct. So starting there, if the information's not correct, what's that? What, what step do you have to take for that, that line first? You know, honestly, if I saw something super incorrect, I would probably just call the county and see if there's any way to correct it immediately. But there is on the protest form, one of the reasons for protest, which you have to check a reason for protesting. And one of them is incorrect information. So, okay. yeah, that's good. that's good to know. I didn't know it was more than just uh, the tax side of things and the payment. Okay. So we decide we're going to protest. Uh, where would we get that protest form? Do you think it's my guess? You know, I'm throwing it out there because I've actually never done this before up until now, because we're going to use me as a guinea pig because my property values went up and it is astronomical this year. So um, I'm assuming it's going to be on the county CAD or you can call the county appraisal district and get a copy or go visit their office. 
Yes, you can get a hard copy, I am sure, but the easiest way to protest is directly online. So, you know, every um, county may have it kind of in a small, you know, different place. On Gillespie County, I'm seeing it under online services and you go to online appeals. And um, that's- Also, if you want to do a share screen, we can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a share screen so you can walk, you can show them at least what the, the county CAD website looks for Gillespie County. Uh, for those of you just joining on, hi, I see y'all. Drop a note in the chat. Let us know where you're from, uh, your city and state. If you have any questions, please drop uh, a question for myself or Jill. Also, all of Jill's information and contact information and my contact information is going to be in the description for this podcast. These podcasts are recorded, so you can go back and reference them, share them with their, your friends. Um, like I said, we're kind of doing this little case study with me uh, in my property. Um, I have an investment property in Fredericksburg, Texas. Uh, so we're going to look at that, that investment property and see kind of what the steps are. Uh, right now, we are actually going through the motions of pulling up the, here we go, the County Appraisal District at Gillespie uh, County CAD. This is their website. Most of the County Appraisal District websites, I will tell you, do look like this. They, they have a very, very similar format. However, if we're dealing with a lot of rural communities, there are, there are some communities and counties that are still transferring a lot of their information uh, to an online database. So if you do have a ranch or a rural property and it's not coming up or you're having difficulties, that may be the case. It, it's not uncommon, uh, especially, you know, if it's a ranch in the literally in the middle of nowhere. So uh, just want to make sure that, you know, if you can't find that information, you can call the county uh, directly and they'll be able to facilitate any questions that you have or maybe print you a hard copy. Definitely, definitely. So... What I have pulled up on the screen right now is just an example of a typical residential property here in Gillespie County. And so you can see all kinds of information about your property. You can check out your plat map. Um, and, and then further down here, you know, not only do they have property details, but they also have property values that are kind of lined out. So it's good to kind of understand a little about property values. Basically, um, you've got your land and that's valued at a different amount and in a different way than your improvement. So you add the two together and then you have your total property value. So they actually split it out for you on here and you can see what they've done. So, you know, an appraiser is going to be able to look at this and at several different ways. So first they can assess the prop, the county's um, land value and determine if that land value is correct or not. And then they can take the whole property as a whole and look at it based on other sales that have happened in your area recently and whether or not that value looks good. So, so uh, you have a, it's broken up into two sections. You have the the dirt, the lot, the raw land by itself, and then the additional improvements. Is that yes, correct? Okay. That's correct. And then okay, so I can see that there it has uh, it has the porch information, the storage. Okay. Uh, that actually makes a lot of sense. That's good yeah. to know. So as you keep going down, there's more and more kind of breakouts of information. And you can see, you know, the different taxing entities and how much of your tax is going to which one and for which reason. Um, and then there's a difference in your market value and taxable value. If you've got a homestead exemption or if you're over 65 um, or you have an ag exemption, you know, the market value is what they feel like you could sell the property for um, as a whole. And then the taxable value takes into account that discount that you get with your exemptions. Sorry, guys, I was muted. See, even, even us experts at the podcasting keep ourselves muted. That's the one thing that drives me crazy about Zoom meetings. I'm like, wait, you're muted. Keep talking. Okay, so you you brought up a point of um, exemptions. Tell me a little bit about the, the standard exemptions you would see in in your property taxes with residential, and then some common exemptions uh, with uh, 
apartment ranch. Yeah, I think with residential and all properties, you can commonly see the homestead exemption. So your first property that you live in, that's your home, um, that's your homestead exemption. And it basically means that the county can't raise your uh, tax value more than 10% per year. Um, and then over 65 has exemptions, veterans have exemptions. Um, as far as rural properties go, you can start getting agricultural exemptions at five and up acres and then wildlife exemption at 10 and up acres. So yeah, those are all very important ways to save money on your property tax. Absolutely. Save money and be within those guidelines. We love that. Okay. So i uh, got the information. I checked everything out on the CAD. Looks right. I do want to protest uh, the, the new uh, value that they have given the property. So what are the next steps? And can you pull up a form? On the I can pull up the Hayes County form because the Gillespie County makes you go through a little bit more steps to get there. Okay. But the Hayes County form, let me get this up really quick. Here we go. You basically need to know three things in order to fill out this form. You need to know why you want to protest. You need to know what you think your property is valued at. And then you need to make a decision as far as, um, oh, it's erroring out on me. Um, you need to make a decision about how you want your hearing to go. Uh, so you can either do that in several different ways, either in person or written and whatnot. So the most important thing I think is to gather your, your reason. And then if your reason is valuation, you really need to find that, that valuation. Um, so in, in this protesting. particular scenario, we're protesting valuation. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and I know some of you have chimed in a little late. Uh, one of the major ways to find, uh, you know, your average valuation or exact valuation is you can order a CMA or a broker's price opinion from an agent. And this is, this is official um, as far as it's done from um, what we have available to us. Uh, however, if you want exact value, um, you would hire an appraiser. And, and, and like we said before, and some of y'all jumping in a little late, it really is in your best interest because we are talking a decent amount of money. Um, it is in your best interest to hire a, a certified licensed appraiser because they're the ones that are going to have one, the most experience and their price value is going to have the most clout. I mean, it is that's about as solid as it gets is, is a licensed appraiser. So um, in this scenario, you know, we've contacted a broker, reached out to me or the team, and we have taken, ordered and created a broker's price opinion or a CMA. Um, and we're talking pennies on the dollar. Like depending on the property, it starts for about like a hundred bucks. I mean, super easy, especially when we're talking about saving thousands. Um, and then also um, hiring you. I'm you know, in this scenario, what, what are we talking about spitballing for like a home? If somebody was going to hire you, um, do you charge kind of as, you know, as the, the task, the protest task or by the hour? Yeah. Um, what I did mostly last year was really the first time that I started assisting people directly with this. And I offered people for, you know, under a hundred dollars, I would give them the information that they needed and then they could make up their own valuation determination from that. And that works really well with a lot of standard residential homes, especially if you're in a neighborhood with a lot of homes that are similar around you, right? Um, when you have a property that's more rural or there's less sales information or whatnot, and it's harder to really determine, um, going for a full appraisal runs anywhere between $400 and you know, $700, depending on how much information is a timeout guys that's residential because let me tell you on the farm and ranch side um taking that residential property hat off a smaller property and putting on a full-blown ranch um uh, ranches and we're talking about from 200 acres to 2000 acres multiple improvements because it's just not the raw land um in that scenario most of those appraisers actually have to get boots on the ground they have to measure all the improvements they have to see uh the quality of the improvements, how much they've depreciated, um, you know, things of that nature. So there's a lot that that's involved uh, with that. So um, in the aspect of talking about home 
you know, the home side of an appraisal, you know, that, that kind of sounds about right. Four to seven, four to 700 in that scenario. Um, and then, you know, I do want to chime in farm and ranch. Mind you, we may be talking about a two to $5 million, $10 million ranch. So in the grand scheme of the ratio, uh, apples to apples, you may very well pay a few thousand dollars for that appra appraisal. So don't, don't get too much in the weeds about that when you do crunch the numbers. Um, it's very relative, especially when you're talking about saving um, thousands and then with a ranch, tens of thousands of dollars um, on on those uh, appraisals with y'all. So uh, and then to always calling to consult and to get quotes. Um, but yeah, no, I to get a full blown actual card that says, hey, this is what it's really worth by a licensed appraiser. Um, you know, to me, that's, that's pennies on the dollars. And we're talking about, you know, property taxes in some of these areas. Like I know mine's on this particular property in Fredericksburg, you know, we're talking about five to $6,000. So if I can save a few thousand, uh, I'm, I'm down for the 400 bucks. Let's, let's do, let's do this. So no, thank you. Didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Thank you. Uh, for, I, I want to give everybody. Well, a, it's a, true. The rural clear, ones are definitely more expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to give everybody a clear scope, but I think, um, us starting with a home protest, a home property protest, one, all of us can relate. We all live in a house. Um, and, and then being able on a larger scale, being able to fill this out for, you know, a, a, a rural property or farm and ranch um, on a larger scale. So because you're going to go to the same place, you're going to go to the county appraisal and, and do these protests there. So, um, OK, so we got your appraiser appraisal and you have your broker's price opinion. And now you have this protest form. Um, you know, I would assume like you're looking if I'm going to talk about a price, I'm, I'm going to look at maybe the average or, you know, what, what are some guidelines that you'd recommend? Well, when you have comparable sales that are similar to your property, you, the thing that the county didn't know, they haven't been to your house. They're doing a mass appraisal. So they're using just statistics and lots of data and they're all running it together and they're really kind of con considering everything apples to apples, even though we all know that there's can be big differences between the condition of a property, um, the upgrades in a property, and all of those sorts of things that a physical inspection is something that you would see. Um, so they haven't been able to see those things. So those are what you want to look for. Um, as far as, you know, what does my property have or what condition is my property in compared to some of these other sales? So the other thing that is interesting, and I know that we focus on the state of Texas, um, th there are some people that are like, well, can I just search Zillow and, and, and can I do this? Other states that are uh, disclosure states, you can. Most people don't realize that Texas is a non-disclosure state. Um, and do you want to walk through what that means? Because I think that's kind of the light on why sometimes the appraisal district doesn't have the best view of the price of your property. Right. Yeah. Um, Zillow is really similar to how the county is, is doing their appraisal. It's very impersonal. It's just using all the mass data that they can really come across. But honestly, Zillow isn't legally allowed to have that data in Texas. So we're a non-disclosure state, meaning that we can have private real estate sales and not announce that information to the public. So, you know, in the MLS, a lot of times those sales are, are sold and the information is put there and it's all, um, it's all available to agents and brokers who are members of the MLS to use that information, but it's not full information because there are some sales that are happening outside of that realm. Um, and then Zillow in particular, you know, isn't necessarily, um, double checking or verifying all of those sales figures that they're posting. It's just information that they're getting through all these programs. So you're using information that's not necessarily verified, that's not necessarily complete. And then they're not even seeing your property to be able to know what condition it's in compared to other properties. And so it's a figure, it's a zestimate, you know, it's, it's just an estimate. It's not necessarily, um, ideally 
correct. It's not a hundred percent accurate due to the laws that we have as non as a non disclosure state. So there's a lot of missing information, which is why you would want to go to an expert uh, like yourself, an appraiser, um, and, and get the full picture. Um, that's that is you know, there, that's really insightful, and it's you know it's kind of a out of sight, out of mind. You don't know what you don't know. And the general public's not going to know this information. I've had even people tell me, well, my property is appraised at X, Y, Z. And I'm like, well, where, who did your appraisal? And they're like, well, I looked it up on the county appraisal district. And I said, no, that is not exact value. Uh, that is the county's uh, price that they're basing your taxes off of. Um, and you can adjust that. You can protest that. Yeah. Um, and it's and, been laughable some years, you know, like for many years, at least where I was living, I was in Travis County for a while and Travis County's values were always under the actual sales price that you could get in the market. So a lot of years we didn't even protest our taxes because, you know, it was, it was a fair value. With, and, with, and, I'm gonna, and, I, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, be, it, you know, a, a really sweat on that because you know, most people were like, well, why is it less? And I said, well, in the grand scheme of things, you'd like it to be less because you're paying less. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've had other people that were like, well, I don't want to make an offer on a property because it, it has that appraisal district value on it. And so I think understanding the definition and the purpose, even though it says uh, the word appraisal and the word value, you know, what does it actually mean? What's the outline to come up with that figure versus what you're protesting and how you're protesting. Uh, so hopefully we educated a, a few individuals on that, that, you know, the word appraisal and value is not created equal to, if, depending on who you're working with. Um, and, and so, we were, <laughs> you know, the bank's value for your house and the appraisal district's value for your house and your value for the house. And so, yeah, you're right. There's lots of definitions of value and, Private appraisers, independent appraisers are always looking for market value. So that's the price you could get if you were to sell the house without, you know, any kind of weird relations in a normal situation. What would your house bring or what would your property bring at that day, day of appraisal? Mm -hmm. OK, so I do want to go into that because there's a lot of assumptions with appraisals. So my understanding is that appraisals are good from the day that they're issued like not the day before and not the day after. Is that correct? They are good um, as long as someone feels like that time period is relevant. Okay. So like, for example, when you do an appraisal for an estate, if someone passed away, I may be doing appraisal for a year past or a year previous to today. So I'm looking at older information, right? Um, but that value is relative to them as of that date, because that's when they're trying to settle the account and the estate with their family. Um, for this situation, when we're talking about property value assessment, they're assessing your value as of December 31st of the prior year. Okay. So, you know, our valuations that we want to look at to protest our tax values would be how much was your property worth on December 31st of 2023? Um, anything that's happened since that time, not relevant, right? 2024 is not relevant right now. We're just looking at December 31st, 2023 for property taxes. And that makes sense because so many people think relative like to today. Yeah. Um, I also let clients know um, when it comes to, at least on the real estate side of things, if you get an appraisal, um, you know, there's a lot of factors uh, that we put into there. Is the property going to sell with a loan? Is it going to be cash? Um you know, how we would base the price based on the appraisal and the condition, like you said, property condition. That's one of those things that you may have gotten appraisal um, a few months back, but something might have happened uh, to increase or damage uh, the, the property value. So I always, I, I, like you said, it's within that time frame and being realistic. Um, and, and it just, what is the appraisal being used for? Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I I did like to bring that that date time period up because so many people feel like, oh, well, we had an appraisal last year and, you know, la -da -da -da, and it's like, well, a lot has happened, um, you know, so it, it, it's one of those things like, it, it, are we using it for, a, you know, a bank loan? Like, you know, the bank's going to want a, a current like that week, that day, that month. It's it, You know, it needs to be very, very close to time. 
um, versus something like you said, like an estate, uh, as well as uh, I didn't know that about the property tax date. It's from December 31st. I mean, that's yeah, property values are a little different from that time period to now. So mm -hmm. thanks for bringing that up. I just I just learned a little tidbit of knowledge. <laughs> okay, so getting back on protesting. So we have the forms, we have our comps. Um, we've decided that we're protesting the price and based on the information, we believe our property is valued, you know, at three, let's just use a round number, property valued at 300,000 and the, the, they have it at 350. So mm -hmm. you're going to take and fill out that protest form. And you mentioned something about how you can, can you walk us through that? Sure. Um, I don't know if you can share my screen. It says I'm sharing my screen, but then I don't see it. Um, let's see, let me try one more time to pull up this form. It's a two page form, so it's not anything too crazy. Do me a favor, um, hit present again, um, and do the share screen. Cause I think I, you got knocked off. I think I did too. And it's not giving me the same options I was having earlier. Hmm. Yeah, it's not giving me the same options as earlier. But basically, there's a there's a property form. It's form 5132, Properties Owners Notice of Protest, that you're going to find on your county's website, your appraisal district. So um, it's a two-page form. They ask pretty basic questions. What's your name and address, right? And then they ask you, what is your reason for protesting? So either your valuation is off or they've got incorrect information, that sort of thing. Um, they ask you what you, your opinion of your property value is. So that's where you could put in, you know, I feel like my property is worth 300000 versus the $350,000. And then they ask for data. There we go. Is, it, is, this, is this it? Yes, can you, can you, this is can it. Everybody, can everybody see what's going on here? Okay, awesome. Uh, great. Okay. Um, yeah, so I just Googled the form number and it popped right up um, okay. just in general. So so you have it. Uh, very self-explanatory. Um, your prison self explanatory Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so property description, reasons for protest. That's what we were talking about. Um, you know, if there was any issues with your uh, uh, property information, um, this is where you could edit that. Um, and then, okay, so it's the top one. <laughs> it's like checkbox one. Awesome. Okay. This is a popular reason. <laughs> okay. Additional facts. What is your opinion? Uh, provide facts that may help the protest. So this is where you would... Um, write in, you know, that you got a broker's price opinion, a CMA, which is a competitive market analysis, or you also have uh, a current appraisal from a certified licensed uh, appraisal in your appraiser in your state. Um, okay. Walk us through this part. It says, do you, do you request an informal conference with the appraisal office before protesting the hearing? Yes. So this is where you get to make a couple decisions about the hearing. Now, not everyone is going to go to the hearing. So you are going to fill out this two-page form. You're going to send it in. And then an undetermined amount of time is going to pass. <laughs> but then they're going to get back to you. And they're going to give you an offer. So there's a chance that they take your information and they say, okay, that's a fair deal. We'll offer you $300,000 or we'll offer you $310,000 as your new assessed value. And if you are okay with that and you accept that, that's where the process ends and you won't even have to go to a hearing. But let's say you asked for $300,000 and they didn't give it to you and you want to go in person or talk on the phone or whatever and explain your case more fully and see if you can get a better uh, result, that's when you would go to the hearing. And so you can go in person, you can do a teleconference, or you can do a video conference, um, and you can just send in a written affidavit. 
Um, the trickiest part of not going in person is that you have to get a notarized affidavit of all of the evidence you want to submit and get it to the office before your actual hearing. So there's kind of like an extra step in there that um, you could possibly mess up, you know, by not getting the information to them on purpose or on time. And so, yeah, in person might be the best way unless you're just really convinced that you can get it over. Absolutely. Like I could understand, um, for example, if this was a ranch, you know, three hours away, you'd want to mail it to the county versus, you know, I can just go up. It's a, it's a two minute drive, uh, you know, to the appraisal district into the county. Um, no, no, no. That makes sense. So, so in those scenarios, it, you know, even though it, it is probably in your best interest to go in person, there is the option um, to mail it, especially if you're talking about rural properties or you have multiple properties. Like I'm just thinking like spitballing in my head, like say you own a bunch of VRBOs or investment properties and they're in other states. So um, having the option to mail uh, this this out and just basically like you're saying, be very careful of the protocol and making sure that you've done it, um, done it to, to par and making sure that you have that information in the way that they require it to be. Mm -hmm. And notarized. And notarized. I'm assuming they're all going to want it notarized. <laughs> uh, I think so. Okay, this is cool. I like the fact you have an option by telephone, in person, video conference. Um, and I see the O owner affidavit uh, of evidence. So I see all that there. That's awesome. Yeah. And then the next question is basically um, you know, how do you want your hearing notice and procedures sent to you? So you get to pick first class mail, certified mail you know, text or phone number, email, that sort of thing. So that's really you know, self-explanatory too. Um, the next section, section seven, is if you are going to request a special panel request or a special panel to hear your case. Um, and that, that can be done if you feel like you have some kind of more complex situation, or as you see, if your property is appraised at $52 million or greater, you're kind of automatically in the special panel position. Yeah, I'd probably want to look at that price point <laughs> if the property was $57 million. <laughs> that's, that's interesting, that's an interesting figure. Um, like I said, learning, learning a bunch of new things there. This is very exciting, not scary at all for those that are doing this for the first time. Um, I am just, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. not super hard to go through this process on your own. And the people I know that have done it on their own have had good results for the most part. Um, you know, you, you can hire the service to do it for you and also get a reduction. Um, but like I said, I really feel like the process is pretty simple to do on your own if you want. So I love telling people about this because you're right. I don't think very many people really know what the process is or even know that it's this easy. Yeah, I mean, very simple. Um, uh, and I'm so glad that we have th this talk and you and I kind of brainstormed about this because it is uh, protesting this is right around the corner. Uh, you know, everybody needs to start this. And, you know, and also, too, don't wait to the deadline because it does take time to ask a broker for a broker's price opinion. It does maybe take up to a week, depending on the property, to put that together. And if you have to do a full blown uh, appraisal, you know, that can take several weeks or even a month, depending on how complex the property is. So um, you definitely want to get this process this started. Time. Yeah. This is the time because May 15th is usually the deadline. Um, it can vary a little bit based on when the county mails out their notices. I think they have to give everybody you know, 30 or 45 days. So if they don't mail it just on time, sometimes they'll extend it a little further. But May 15th is what we're looking at. So this is the time to do it. And yeah please give us a call if you need some help. Well, this is very exciting. Um, I'm so glad that we had you on today. Is there any information that you want to add as far as, you know, uh, processes, procedures, uh, how to um, get a hold of you, uh, anything you just want to add in addition to kind of what we covered today? Yeah, I think my my last bit of advice would be if you are going to do the hearing in person or on the phone, keep your cool. 
keep your emotions in check and really just stick to the facts. Keep it really simple, as simple as you can, because the people on the panel are actually not usually trained appraisers and they don't necessarily understand all the value terms um, from my own personal experience and some of my clients. So you really need to just keep everything as calm and professional and unemotional as you can. And just know that if for some reason your hearing doesn't go the way that you want, you still have a step ahead from there. You can go to an arbitration and continue on with this process and, and battling the government in, in whatever way that you feel is fair for you. So yeah, give me a call if you need 512-294-1320. Uh, my email is Jill at Abode, Texas. And yeah, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Integrative Real Estate. Awesome. Sorry. I was just making sure with that the the mic was on. As some of y'all know, I have dogs and Jill also has dogs. So sometimes we have to hit the uh, mute button because uh, they get a little excited while we're doing the podcast. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We did have a question um, from Ben and Grayson. Um, you know, you protest your home taxes pretty much every, every year. People do it. Um, would you protest your farm and ranch taxes every year? What's your what's your insight on that? You know, it depends on the situation, the county, what's going on, the history of your value with them. You know, like if you've historically been happy with the value that they've got on your property, if you've got a large ag exemption or, or wildlife exemption and your taxes are already pretty low, you know, other than looking at the value of your house or your improvements that they're giving, you know, you may not have a whole lot to battle with on those situations. So yeah, it really just depends on your own personal situation. Absolutely. Case by case. But in, at the end of the day, if you're unsure, please feel free to reach out to an expert in the field. Uh, I know that Jill is uh, more on the residential appraiser side. We do have a list of farm and ranch uh, appraisers. So if you need some information, please reach out to us or the team. Our name is our phone number. Super easy. You can text us there too. It's also e our email address, 1-833-TX-RANCH. You can call us um, or 1-833-TX-RANCH at gmail.com uh, and we'll be able to assist you. So we're very excited uh, to have Jill and to go through that. Super excited. Thank you for using me as a guinea pig. Uh, see guys, it wasn't scary. It wasn't hard. The forum was pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, so if you have, uh, if you really want to protest, get on the phone with your uh, local broker or agent that you use in, in your county or area of region as far as your farm and ranch and um, get also with your appraiser. And if you need help, give us a call. We'll be happy to give you a consult and work on that. So thank you so much, Jill. This was so much fun. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks. No problem. Awesome. Hope well, y'all have an amazing helpful information. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just hope everybody got helpful information. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I learned a few things and I mean, that's saying something. So. Well, it's one of the few times you can actually protest your taxes and get your taxes lowered. I mean, think about it, like sales tax, you can't really argue with that. So here we go. This is your chance. I know. For once, we're excited about the tax process. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all have a great Friday. I'm very excited. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to get the ball rolling on this. I'm excited to get my form started. Great. Well, I hope you have lots of success, Lindsay. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.